One of the things that we have to consider when we go through the hypothesis test process is the possible results that we have versus reality. So what I've drawn up in the screen here is comparable to what's on page 368 of the text. And we have reality. And in reality, the null hypothesis is true or it's not true. And we don't know that. If we knew that, we wouldn't even have to do a hypothesis test. Usually time will play out and tell which, whether or not it was true. But it is true at the moment, it's not true at the moment. One of those two things has to be the case. And when we run through our hypothesis test, we're either going to reject the null hypothesis or we're not going to reject the null hypothesis. And there's a couple of the cases here. You know, there's four possibilities then as we look at the combining these. And if the null hypothesis is true and we fail to reject that, we're happy campers because we would have made what would turn out to be the right decision. And the same thing is if the null hypothesis is false and we end up rejecting it, again, we're happy campers because it turns out that we made the right decision. What we have to look at is we have to look at the other two cases. And one of the big things to keep in mind is we can do everything right, but because when we're making decisions using statistical methods, we don't get to work with absolute certainty. And because we don't get to work with absolute certainty, there is a risk that we will reach the wrong conclusion. So there's two cases where, through no fault of our own, we could reach the wrong conclusion. And that would be rejecting the null hypothesis when it's actually true. And this case is known as a type one error. You know, error because it's an issue there it's it's wrong but it's not wrong because we did any you know it wasn't our mistake it's just kind of our bad luck and this is the equivalent of a false positive this would be a case where you know we conclude that there's been some sort of change or we conclude that things are different or we conclude that there's a relationship between things, or we conclude that a drug or a treatment is effective when in reality it's not. There's been no change, there is no difference, there is no relationship, there is no effect. So that's one of the things that we have to be aware of. And the other one, is when we fail to reject the null hypothesis, but we should have. This is known as a type two error. And this is the equivalent of a false negative. So there was a change, but we conclude there wasn't. There was a difference between two things we're comparing, but we, can, you know, but we didn't conclude that they were different. There is a relationship between the two things that we're looking at, but we didn't conclude that there is. You know, the treatment is effective, but we didn't conclude that it was effective. So both of these things can happen to us. Those are things that we have to be aware of in our planning here. And it turns out 
when we choose our significance level, when we choose our alpha, or in the book it's chosen for us, this actually represents the probability of making a type one error. We get to choose the risk that we take for making a type one error. And you know, we've been basically using 0 0.05. They've been telling us that we can use 0 0.01, but we get to choose that. And you might think that, hey, I'll just make it really, really small so I don't have to really worry that much about a type one error. But in addition to alpha, there's also beta. And beta is the probability of a type two error. Oh, that is sad. Let's try writing that again. And when we're in the case of all things being equal, so, you know, so if we go ahead and fix our sample size, if you were to pick a lower value for alpha, what's going to happen is your value for beta increases. So you can't just pick a really, really small alpha because and not worry about the effect that it has. You know, there has to be some balance in between those. And one of the ways to kind of fix the issue there, if these aren't where you want them to be is this is where a larger sample size can help you out. As you increase sample size, that's going to shrink down the value for beta. Um, we don't really get that far into it in this course, but it is something we have to be aware of. And one of the things a lot of students in the past have a common misconception, central limit theorem says, hey, once n is greater than 30, I don't have to worry about the, you know, whether or not the initial distribution was normal. So my sample size must be good. Well, not necessarily. You don't want to have too large a risk of either of these errors. One of the other things that they talk about associated with this is the power of the test. And the power of the test is the complement of beta. And it represents the probability of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. So this is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis given, so it's the probability of reject the null hypothesis given the null hypothesis is actually false. That's conditional probability there. And what can be a problem with having too small of a sample size, even with your choice of alpha there, is that the power can be too low. And what, you know, a low powered test, the problem with that is you're not giving yourself a chance of finding the change, the difference, the relationship, the effect, if it's out there. And if you're not giving yourself a good chance of finding it, if it's out there, then what was the point of running through the process? So you know, this is something when you head out into the real world becomes much more of a consideration. Um, you know, we touch on it briefly in this class, but can't really emphasize if you were to do this out in the real world, how important these considerations are when you're putting your design together when you're figuring out what sample size you're going to need. And we did explore this a little bit back in chapter seven, where we picked our margin of error and then found the sample size required to make that happen. It's, it's analogous to that, a little bit more involved.